Hello everyone and welcome to this week's reviews. The Boss Baby was a massive hit for DreamWorks Animation and even received an Oscar nomination. They've now returned to the exploits of that suit-wearing youngster in a sequel. This is The Boss Baby Family Business. I will admit I was not the biggest fan of the first film. I felt like the main gag was that it involved Alec Baldwin's voice coming out of a baby's mouth, and the concept was then stretched to feature length. I was hoping the sequel would manage to win me over, but alas, I was still underwhelmed. To start with the positives, Boss Baby 2 is a visually impressive film, which was also one of the strong suits of its predecessor. Director Tom McGrath went for a heavy 1950s animation influence in creating the world, and that continues here with the designs and animation. I especially want to comment on the villain, who is very expressive and looked like the long-lost brother of Tweedledee and Tweedledum from Disney's Alice in Wonderland. I would be surprised if they weren't an inspiration. I also thought Amy Sedaris was really good as the voice of Tim's one-year-old daughter, who begins wearing the soon tie. Otherwise, Boss Baby 2 seemed to be on a constant sugar rush. There are very few points where the movie slows down, and it jumps from one overly caffeinated scene to the next, and it proved to be too much of a sensory overload for me. Humor-wise, I only laughed a few times, which is not good when the movie is constantly throwing joke after joke at you. The attempted emotional moments did not land for me, nor did I find myself all that invested in the conflict between Tim and his younger brother. I do know one of the reasons the first film is such a crowd-pleaser, and why it possibly got that Oscar nomination, was because of how bonkers it was. And if you like The Boss Baby for how surreal the concept was presented, then I think the sequel will work for you too. They just don't seem to do it for me, and I'm not sure this is a movie I'll ever think about again. Next up is another sequel, The Noose Adventure, starring Beatrix Potter's beloved bunny, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runway. I enjoyed the first Peter Rabbit movie and found it quite charming and funny. Other people were less than impressed, and direct co-writer Will Gluck definitely noticed, as the sequel actually serves as a commentary on the reaction the first film got. And that's a major reason why I liked it. Peter Rabbit 2 is full of jokes that read like Gluck ripped remarks straight out of the reviews, and he has a lot of fun with putting those in the mouths of the characters. There's even a moment commenting on the fact that a number of people find James Corden's voice to be really annoying. I also noticed a psych gag involving a publication that wrote a particularly scathing review of Peter Rabbit. I just love that Will Gluck lets loose with these fourth wall jokes, and yet it does not become a diatribe about how critics just didn't get it. Peter Rabbit 2 is actually an example of a filmmaker listening to the criticisms and trying to rectify them in his own cheeky way. Even Peter's story arc comes out of his frustration that others perceive him as an unlikable jerk which was one of the main criticisms of the first movie. The movie is not just a series of self-aware jokes, though, as it does properly develop the characters. McGregor, as played by Donald Gleeson, still has his high-strung moments, but we also see how he's evolved since the events of the first movie. Gleeson gets some really funny line readings, and quite a number of moments that show off his physical comedy skills. The other animals also get their moments to shine, with Mopsy getting her own humorous story arc. The animation, courtesy of the talented folks at Animal Logic, is fantastic, as the various rabbits and other residents of the Lake District are appropriately expressive and are successfully integrated into the live-action settings. I also want to give a shout-out to Amy Horn, who does the voice of Cottontail. In the first movie, she was voiced by Daisy Ridley, and I honestly had no idea it was not her in the sequel until the end credits. That certainly deserves praise. As someone who liked the first movie and thought some commentators were unnecessarily cruel towards it and Will Gluck, I certainly appreciate the direction of Peter Rabbit 2 and had a fun time watching it. Thanks for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.